Well, hello everyone. Hello and welcome to the Figgy Art Museum's Virtual Thursdays at the Figgy Series. My name is Melissa Moore and I'm Director of Education here at the Figgy and I'm very happy you could join us tonight. For the time being, we're hosting these virtual programs almost every Thursday, so please check out the Figgy's website for topics and to register. We're able to offer these programs at no cost to you thanks to the generous sponsorship provided by Chris and Mary Rayburn. Thank you, Chris and Mary. While these programs are free to watch, I encourage you to consider becoming a Figgy member. You know, your membership helps us continue to fulfill our mission of bringing art and people together, even if we can't always be together in person. A quick note, just a bit of business about tonight's program. If you have any questions for our presenter, please enter them into the Q&A. You can do that at any time, and then we'll get to them as we can. So at this time, it's my extreme pleasure to introduce our featured speaker this evening, the Figgy's very own Andrew Wallace, who's Director of Collections and Exhibitions. Andrew earned his degree in art history from the University of Maryland and has held key positions at the Smithsonian National Portrait Gallery, the Norman Rockwell Museum, among other notable institutions. He has overseen all exhibitions and collections at the Figgy since 2008, and I have to say he has done a phenomenal job re-envisioning the Figgy's galleries, both through the display of special exhibitions and also permanent collection artworks, to ensure that the museum offerings continue to move us closer to fully representing our diverse and beautiful community. So Andrew, some other time we'll have to host you for a program where you can provide an overview on just how far the Figgy's come with this initiative, largely because of your visionary work. Um, but tonight we're here to celebrate one of your recently curated exhibitions. So Andrew's gonna be presenting on the exhibit, Jim Dine and Lee Friedlander who work from the same house. This exhibition is on view in the Lewis Gallery through November 14th. Andrew, thank you so much for speaking with us tonight. Thank you, Melissa, I appreciate it. And greetings, Figgy Files, thank you for coming. Um, I don't know if this is the smallest exhibition we've done, but it is, it's a pretty small one. Nevertheless, uh, Jim Dine and Lee Friedlander work from the same house as one of several we have mounted over the years that would not have been possible without the generous support of collector and gallerist, gallerist Brent Sikama. Since 2007, his gifts of artworks have cre created by some of the most significant artists of our time have made it possible for us to mount such exhibitions as Kara Walker, The Emancipation Approximation, Vic Muni's Hand Remade, as well as this one. Most importantly, within the Forum of Museum Exhibitions, resulting from his generosity, we've been able to discuss some of the society's most pressing issues, the history of racial injustice in America, the degradation of the environment, poverty, and life on the fringes of society. Less weighty, but still interesting from the perspective of artistic collaboration and aesthetic exchange are exhibitions like work from the same house. The collection of prints on exhibit reflects each one of the artists interests in working with others to produce bodies of work that are as introspectively revealing as they are sometimes dryly comical. There is an opportunity here, of course, for the average visitor, even when the imagery is sexual in nature, which uh, is included in our exhibition, to guess what elements of each, the photographs and the etchings, lent themselves to the chosen pairings. An experience that, as we all know, is useful to the development of one's critical seeing skills. As pre presented here, only those sheets donated in 2017 are on view, but as you will hopefully see, the themes which interested the artists the most from throughout their careers and which can be found in the complete portfolio are, never, are nevertheless evident here. And with that, I'm going to, uh, let's see, make our way. So here's the, um, the introduction that uh, Jim Dine created for, uh, for this portfolio of pieces with this, um, self-portrait essentially of the two artists sitting in bed and in a flat in London where, D where Dine was uh, living at the time. So this is an example of, of one of the pairings that you can see in our gallery and um, what questions we're asking uh, are as what relationship do these these uh, phallic symbols at the bottom of the um, 
the piece, these etchings by Jim Dine, have to do with the elements of uh, Lee Friedlander's photograph. And I should say that the photographs that are grouped here in this portfolio are all images that are sort of well known of, of Friedlanders and appeared in, in other venues and other forms uh, prior to this portfolio. As Dine wrote in his inter introduction on the page you just saw, Lee Friedlander and I met in 1962. He gave me a photograph of Cincinnati without knowing I am from there. We have been exchanging things all the time since then, friendship and pictures. Our work is from the same house. He always understands my words. Now, Jim Dine's breakthrough as an artist came in 1960 with the exhibition of his house at New York's Judson Gallery. The small, let's see, small, well, here's the entirety of the portfolio. Uh, not all of it is included in, in the Figgy exhibition. The small installation in the basement of the Judson Church included salvage window frames, bits of garbage, graffitied wood, and clothing the artist harvested from the streets of the Bowery. Dying was part of a cohort of artists with whom he also collaborate, collaborated, such as Alan Kaprov and Klaus Oldenburg, who were on the vanguard of the assemblage and pop art movements. Those familiar with Dine's place in New York's art scene of the early 1960s will recall his iconic work, Red Robe with Hatchet, self-portrait from 1964, which was one of a suite of works uh, the artist began in 1962. Although in true pop fashion, Dine appropriated the robe from a New York Times magazine advertisement, Dine has never considered himself a pop artist, choosing instead to focus on the exploration of self, drawing inspiration from personal history and familiar subject matter. Dine cites having grown up in the family's Cincinnati hardware store as having a direct impact on his work. As you can see here in this example from the San Francisco Museum of, of uh, Modern Art, one would uh, look at this and think perhaps of uh, those artists who, are to, who arrive in the 1980s, such as Kenny Scharf, Keith Haring, and uh, even uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat, um, who were making art in the streets from found materials. Added to this um, interest in these familiar subjects was Dine's interest and approach to self-portraiture. As Dine noted in a 1976 interview, I have always done self-portraits. It was convenient, of course, but I think there's more to it than that. When I made the bathrobes and called them self-portraits, looking for a way to make a self-portrait without being called figurative in a traditional manner, I wouldn't do it that way now. I would make a self-portrait. I mean, I'd make a real one, that kind of skirting of the issues is all through modern movement to keep it so-called avant-garde, to keep it in the forefront. This collecting and re-dissemination, if you will, of things in Dine's art, whether of physical materials or symbolic Im imagery, oops, excuse me, of symbolic imagery, tools, hearts, skulls, boots, and those are two examples from the Figgies collection. This one, Sovereign Knights from 1986, and The Boots from 1972. More recently, Pinocchio, which is not a series that I was uh, quite familiar with until I started to look into Dine's more recent work. They show us Dine's engagement in, quote, an intense search for personal identity and autobiography through everyday objects. It confirms Dine's artistic practice. Similarly, Friedlander shares the impulse to collect things of personal significance, in his case, photographs. And like Dine, Friedlander works in series. His subjects can be found in numerous published collections with titles such as Family, The American Monument, Little Screens, such as this one here, and Signs and Self-Portraits. And here's the, an image from his The American Monument series, which um, is kind of comical in the way he's, he's represented uh, the sculpture of General George Rogers Clark 
uh, sort of porting across the river. Interestingly, at the time of this collaboration in 1969, Friedlander's work had recently been featured in MoMA's 1967 New Documents exhibition, which featured his work alongside those giants of photography as, such as Gary Winogrand and Dion Arbus. While Dine, on the other hand, was having just having his first retrospective at the Whitney Museum of American Art. So the 1960s were an incredibly productive period for both artists. Um, and it's interesting that they came together to do a portfolio. Through Figgy's portfolio, though our portfolio is incomplete, we lack 10 sheets from the original set of 16, excluding title page, introduction, and the colophon, all of which are engraved. Um, there are three examples of more obvious self-portraiture in the prints that we have on display in the Lewis Gallery. The first and most direct is, of course, the self-portrait we saw earlier of the two artists taken from the foot of a bed where two are seated and is included with the introduction to the portfolio. Other images are Friedlander appearing in reflection, a theme that is most typical of the artist and his need to document his presence on the landscape wherever and whatever he may be photographing. These types of images were first summarized in Friedlander's 1970s book, self-portrait and best embodied by so, such, sorry, excuse me, such self-portraits as, and that's another one uh, from uh, what's on view with the figure. You can see his reflection in the door um, above. This one, you can see his, uh, his torso and, and legs below a, uh, what would be a, a white piece of paper affixed to the glass window with a picture of Kennedy behind it. So this is an example of uh, Friedlander's most humorous or more humorous self-portraits. And uh, as you can see, he exploits the, to full effect, the feathered, sorry, the fur collar of this woman's coat. Although I, I think some people would find it kind of creepy that he was close enough um, to take the picture um, and standing behind this woman who was unaware. There's another uh, self-portrait by uh, Friedlander that I'm particularly fond of, and the reason for that is um, the way in which the rocks on the ground and, of course, the grasses sort of emphasize uh, aspects of this sort of mysterious figure. Sort of they become a part of his body um, and separate themselves from the landscape below. In addition, later on, uh, Sorry, and here's another example of, of one of Friedlander's mid-60s works, which um, is, is kind of comical. I think if you saw this without context, you would perhaps um, be concerned about the state of mind of the person behind the wheel of the vehicle. But knowing that it's a, it's a set-up photograph by Friedlander and you can see the shadow of the camera on the hood of the car, um, it becomes more comical as a result. And this, a much later image, um, part of a series of works that Lee Friedlander took of his wife, Maria, um, shows his uh, sort of loving and comedic self uh, in this uh, image, Cannon Beach, Oregon, from 1997. In 2003, while at the Center for Creative Photography, I had the occasion, occasion to meet Friedlander, whereupon he took a picture of our inward uh, and opposing pointing shoes. What, if anything, came of the image, I do not know, but the impulse underscored the centrality of this critical theme to Friedlander's work. With a shared sense of humor, this portrait from 1969, taken in London, London during the same bed-sitting as the paired portrait, shows us Dine's pajama-legged bare foot with the same serious expression that Dine seems to perpetually wear. The portrait is then a joint comedic exercise reflecting Dine's inner playful self and once again, Friedlander's visual wit. So what can we make of then of the pairings of images contained in works now on view at the Figgy and which challenge us to see in them what the artists see? To paraphrase John Sarkowski's 1972 text for an exhibition of Friedlander's work at MoMA, 
The ph photographer has, quote, and quote, uh, redirected the technique and aesthetic of documentary photography to more personal ends, not to reform life, but to know it, not to persuade, but to understand. The world is approached as the ultimate source of wonder and fascination, no less precious for being irrational and incoherent. To a large degree, the same can be said of Dine's personal but familiar imagery, and both artists encourage us to know and understand life better. Herein, I think, lies the motivation behind Dine's choice of words for the por portfolio's introduction, uh, the, the phrase work from the same house, a recognition of their novel artistic accord. As the pairings of etchings and photographs uh, represent simultaneous approaches to self-portraiture, each selection responds one to the other. And I think in this case, um, Jim Dine was, uh, for the most part, recycling imagery that he had used previously, but then incorporating it into these assembly, these, these pairings, I should say, in the portfolio. So it is more Dine responding to um, Friedlander's photographs than it is perhaps uh, Friedlander um, selecting images that respond to Dine. This may be less clear in the figgy examples given the absence of, of these sheets from the portfolio, as I mentioned, and which feature, for instance, some of Friedlander's own body images, such as body, B-A-W-D-Y images, such as the one you see here, um, and which may help explain, for instance, the phallic forms found in, in um, dines and etchings uh, in the works on display. So here's another of Friedlander's more body works and uh, Dine's um, response to that. Um, and then this would be the more phallic forms that um, uh, Dine created in response to uh, Friedlander's image. But here the, the association perhaps is, is less clear um, to most of us, maybe not all, but most of us. A staple for both artists has been the inclusion of evidence of the artistic process. For Friedlander, it is those reflections uh, which not only capture his image or shadow, but also the camera in his hands. For Dine, in addition to tools he might use to make an assemblage, uh, there is this long-handled vegetable-like baron, a tool used in printmaking process, most often associated with wood blocks, but also in etchings as well. Given the innovative ways the artists have represented themselves over the years, most people uh, looking at this small selection of the figgy will likely catch on to the portfolio's primary theme of collaborative, collaborative self-portraiture, but perhaps not. So with that, I, um, I'm happy to take uh, um, questions as, uh, as I mentioned. Um, Oh, and, and I'm sorry, I neglected. Either way, the sometimes obvious and sometimes more obscure associations made by these artists will encourage, encourage visitors to look more closely. Now I am ready to take uh, questions from those who, who have them. And I, I apologize for the, my technical um, hiccups. Andrew, thank you so much. You know, walking into the gallery, it's a really fun experience, a lovely experience, but I know that having this extra information really helps understand it better. So I'm sure that those of our audience members who haven't seen it yet will go now with, you know, ready with an open mind and more information. And those who have seen it can revisit it with this new, newly gained knowledge. So thank you for that. I don't see any questions in the Q&A or the chat just yet. So we'll give you a second. Of course, what does happen sometimes, and we've had this for many of our programs, is you're processing and, and you don't really um, have the question fully formed until the middle of the night and it wakes you up and you just have to have it answered. So if that is indeed the case, if that happens to you, go ahead and send me an email. You, um, you received the link to join the program tonight from me, so you'll be able to just respond to that and I'll make sure that Andrew gets All right, Andrew, I'm not sure if you see these popping up, but we do have one. Did the two <laughs> share a house? <laughs> um, it's, it's metaphorical. So both, um, obviously at both uh, 
artists were at times in, in New York, and certainly that's where they met each other. And um, one gets the sense that, um, or, or the misimpression, I should say, or the false impression that the two were somehow or other sharing a house. But in this case, um, Lee Friedlander was, was simply uh, visiting Dine uh, in, uh, later in uh, 1969 when Dine was in, in New York. Um, and, uh, so that's, that's the, that's where we get that. But I think, again, as I mentioned, the connection is that they, uh, or for Dine, it's that they're both thinking similarly about objects and, um, and, and how to approach them as artists. Um, and in the case of, uh, Lee Friedlander, he has done some, done some, uh, color work, but largely his work is black and white and has been for the bulk of his career. Um, and, and certainly his best known images are, are in black and white. Um, I'm sure that they're in, in um, contact with one another um, still. Uh, both are, are, you know, they're elderly at this point, but they are, um, they have been good communicators over the years. And um, as most people know Jim Dine um, collaborated with a lot of uh, people to illustrate um, everything from uh, books to other joint works where he was working, collaborating with another visual artist to to create uh, some combined works such as he's done here with, with Lee Friedlander. So it looks like we did have one more pop up. I am um, just uh, exactly how many pieces in the exhibit are from our own collection. There are a total of eight objects, uh, I believe, in the exhibition. What's interesting is that the title page, colophon, and the introduction are all uh, essentially etchings created by um, Jim Dine for this portfolio. Um, and then there are six, uh, six of these objects have um, photographs associated with them that are, were created obviously by Lee Friedlander. It would be wonderful if we had, um, of course, the opportunity to acquire additional prints from this series. I think a lot of galleries, um, when this uh, edition came out and or perhaps subsequently sold them separately um, as individual works. Uh, so it's uh, it's unfortunate here for us, but it is um, importantly the first instance of Lee Friedlander being included in the Figgy's collection, given that he's such a major force in in twentieth uh, century photography. Well, thank you so much. We did have um, a thank you come in through the the chat, um, and this is exactly what we were hoping for. Thanks for sharing your perspective. It helps to better understand this display. I would agree wholeheartedly with that, and I hope the rest of you do as well. So again, Andrew, thank you for sharing your time with us this evening. I know that you and your curatorial team are kind of barreling toward a new series of exhibitions <laughs> opening, so we really appreciate your time now more than ever. Thanks, Thanks very much, Melissa. I appreciate it, and thank you all for for coming. Yeah. And we oh, hope there's, to... oh, there's some, oh, yep. more. In you're the, getting more some in things. Keep oh, okay. it coming, okay. guys. It's always good to hear. You're, <laughs> you're all welcome. Thank you. And, and we certainly appreciate you coming to see this exhibition as well as every other exhibition that we do uh, because we do them for you. So thank you. So just a reminder for this one, uh, work from the same house is going to be on display through November 14th. That is in the Lewis Gallery on level two. If you do plan to visit the museum in person, please remember to check out our website. We have up-to-date information on visiting hours and our current policies, such as our recently reinstated mask policy for all visitors and staff members. Again, Andrew, thank you for sharing this wonderful program with us tonight. Thank you to our audience members for joining another presentation from Virtual Thursdays at the Figgy. We look forward to seeing you at future programs and maybe even in the museum with a mask, of course, and we hope you have a wonderful evening. Thanks again.